The story starts with Pale and Lethera on a big mission. They're trying to stop two bad wizards, Klaus and Veruka, from taking control of the whole world. But to stop them, they have to find these super special weapons called Tiangshin weapons. There are four of them in Pale and Lethera need to find them before Klaus and Veruka do. These wizards want to use the weapons to make a scary army of zombies, which would be really bad. Now they're heading to India, which is where Rukmini is from. Rukmini tells them about this special place where they can find a magical thing called Storm Wheels. But before they can get those wheels, they have to find something else called Mastodon Master Pendant. Rukmini knows where to get it because she got a letter from her friend before she got stuck in a big stone. When they get to the town where Rukmini's friend lives, Po, Lethera, and Ping enjoy some really tasty Indian food. Meanwhile, Rukmini tries to take something from a local market, but things don't go smoothly, she's not as sneaky as she thought and gets caught by an elephant. Luckily, Po comes to the rescue and saves her. The town where Rukmini grew up is really different now compared to when she was last there. It used to be full of thieves like her, but things have changed. Even the secret spot where she used to hide her stuff isn't the same anymore. It's turned into a restaurant for kids and all the things she hid there are gone. Po starts to wonder if Rukmini is telling the truth, but then Rukmini meets her old friend Dia, and things change. Turns out, Dia has the special Mastodon Master Pendant. Meanwhile, Ping is trying to make Luthera feel better. Luthera has been feeling sad lately because she remembers trying to be like a knight and not doing well, which makes her feel like she let her brother down. But Ping reminds her that she can be a great knight in her own special way. This makes Luthera feel strong again. She decides to go find the Pendant, all determined to do her part to stop Klaus and Veruka. Over in a different part of the restaurant, Rukmini and Po are talking with Dia, trying to catch up. Daya tells them why the town has changed so much. A fancy guy bought a piece of the town and got rid of the bad people, so now the town is much calmer. But Dia sold that important Mastodon Master Pendant because she didn't know how to use it. She's not really eager to tell Rukmini who bought it. Right when things are getting interesting in their talk, Lethera and Ping come over with the pendant that they got it in their hands. At the start, Dia acts like she doesn't care about the pendant, trying to be all cool about it. But things change when Luthera threatens to throw it away. Then, Daya's real feelings come out and she goes after Luthera fast. Right when Luthera is about to toss the pendant into the water, Daya finally spills the beans. She says the pendant is just a regular thing, and she had wanted to give it to Rukmini from the beginning. The actual special Tiancheng pendant they were searching for had been bought by Jayish, the guy who now runs the town. And Jayish is that same elephant Po and Rukmini saw in the market. After giving the not-so-special pendant back to Dia, Luthera decides to let go of her brother's knight rules. She's all set to find her own way of being a knight, without feeling like she has to be just like her brother. While all this was happening, Klaus and Veruka figured out where to find the wind helmet, a super special thing that could control the wind. They had been sailing for a while, and suddenly they realized that the fire whip they had wasn't real. And the ship they were on started moving on its own, and Veruka thought it was because of the wind helmet. Then they got close to a faraway island. But a bunch of thieves jumped them and took all their stuff. Klaus and Veruka weren't ready to give up. They went after those thieves. While chasing them, they bumped into someone surprising, an old buddy of Klaus at a witch named Nigel. Back to the town where Dia told Rukmini her idea. They planned to sneak into a tough room when Jayesh was having his wedding party. This was the perfect time because the guards would be busy with the party. But the room was guarded by some super tough snake guards, making it really hard to get in without being noticed. But the chance came when Jayesh's party started. Rukmini, Po, Lethera, and Ping got in with the other guests and dressed up so no one would recognize them. When they got to Jayesh's place, Rukmini explained their plan. Lethera was meant to distract Jayesh while Rukmini got the keys and Ping would be the lookout to warn them about any danger. And Po's got the job to enjoy the yummy food at the party. But Lethera couldn't really fit in, and Rukmini couldn't help but steal stuff from the guests. And that messed up the plan. Jayesh got into the palace before they could do anything. Quick on her feet, Luthera tried to distract Jayesh by talking about his stuff, and Poe took charge and got the key since Rukmini was busy taking guests' jewelry. Poe manages to get the key to the steel room and avoids the guards, but getting the pendant isn't easy. The room is full of tricky red threads, and Poe needs to use all his chai to avoid them. Even when he's close to the pendant, he can't reach it. Ping has to pass him chopsticks so he can grab it. Their happiness doesn't last long, though. Jayesh and Padma show up outside the palace, and they're not happy. Daya turned against them and told Jayesh about their plan, trying to win his trust. She even offered the capture of the thieves as a wedding present for Jayesh. At this point, Poe and the gang can't do much. They're caught by the guard snakes and locked in a steel room. 
But thanks to Lutheridge's sharp eyes, they find a hidden path and escape without the guards noticing. While all this was happening, Jayesh locked up Rukmini in a different room. He really wanted her magic wand and kept bugging her to spill where it was hidden. But Rukmini wasn't scared at all. She actually started making fun of Jayesh and teasing him. She laughed at him for marrying a thief's daughter. And Jayesh knew that Dia, the girl he was supposed to marry, was indeed a thief. But he only wanted to marry her to get a restaurant and take control of all the land in the town. His big plan was to knock down all the buildings and make the town into a big parking lot. Now on the other side, Pavel Lathura and Ping sneak into Jayesh and Padma's wedding to get the pendant before it's too late. But the snake guards give him a hard time. That's when Rukuni pulls off a daring escape from her prison and comes to help them out. While the big fight is going on, Ping tries to grab the pendant, but it doesn't work out. Po and Lathura are still dealing with those tough serpents, and Rukmini is having her own battle with Dia. In the middle of all this, Dia opens up and tells Rukmini that she loves her. She admits that she was really sad when Rukmini left a while ago. But now that Rukmini is back to get the pendant, it makes Dia even angrier. Dia feels like she's lost and let down by life. She doesn't even care that Jaish wants to take over the town. When Jaish takes charge, Gaia feels defeated and down in the dumps. Even though she knows Jaish isn't a great guy, she still lets the wedding go on. And then, in a blink, the pendant is put around Padma's neck, and it seems like it's gone for good. But Ping comes, moving quickly. He jumps up and pulls down the pendant hard, making it fall and break into bits. It looks like things are bad, but then the broken pieces of the pendant start shining really bright and give off a weird energy that starts going into Ping's body. Nigel guides Veruca and Kloss to his forest home where lots of other witches live. These witches have this idea to turn the island into a whole new England, and they want Veruca to be her queen. A while back, British soldiers caught Veruca, and the witches thought she was gone forever. So the other witches left their home and sailed across the sea to find a new place to live. They got bit lost and ended up on this island. That's where they found the Wind Helmet. This witch named Kyle was guarding it, and it was his job. The reason why Kyle is looking after them is because he really cares about the other witches on the island. He wants them to do well and have a good life. The helmet gives them magic powers to fly and get stuff from ships. Veruca, though, is different. She's thinking about herself. She wants the helmet's power so she can rule the whole world. Vertica really wants the helmet from Kyle, but he's not going to give it up so easily. He knows that if it gets into the wrong hands, big trouble will happen. So Verica gets all aggressive and attacks Kyle to take the helmet by force. Kyle knows how to use the helmet's power. He can fly and control the wind which he uses to fight Veruca. But even though he tries really hard, Veruca wins in the end. She snatches the helmet away from him. Now Veruca has the Wind Helmet, and she already has one of the special Taijin weapons, the Magic Glove. With both of them, she feels really sure of herself. She believes she can find and get the other two legendary weapons too. But while all this was happening, Po and his friends got a huge surprise. They found out that Ping was taken over by Master Mastodon's spirit. Mastodon was really angry when he saw Rukmini using the fire whip that belonged to Master Long Teeth. He wanted it for himself. But Po didn't want to fight against Mastodon because it was his dad's body that was being controlled. While Mastodon was busy fighting Jayesh and the Snake Warriors, Po, Rukmini, and Luthera quickly made a plan. They knew that Mastodon only wanted the Fire Whip. So Rukmini had an idea to trick him. She suggested putting a fake Fire Whip in one place to fool Mastodon into following it. While he was distracted, he could get his spirit out of Ping's body and catch him. Things don't go as planned for Po and the gang. Rukmini and Luthera can't handle Mastodon because he's just too strong. So Po comes up with a different idea. He talks to Macedon, trying to delay him by asking why he's inside the pendant. What happens next surprises everyone. Macedon spills the beans. He was actually keeping the Storm Wheel's location a secret all this time. He had beaten all the animals, whether good or bad, who tried to get those powerful weapons. He really wanted to stop anyone from misusing the Chanshin weapons, even Poe and his pals. So he thought the only way to do that was by getting rid of them. But even as Macedon keeps attacking, Poe doesn't fight back. He stays true to his choice not to be violent and Pain gets back control of his body and mind and Mastodon can't possess him anymore. Poe takes this chance to talk to Mastodon. He tells him about Klaus and Veruca, who want to use the Chanshin weapons to make an army of zombies and take over the world. This news changes Mastodon's view, and he agrees to help Poe and the gang stop those bad ferrets. Mastodon spills the beans that the storm wheels are on the other side of the world, and that Pendant's compass is fake. He made up that story to trick anyone trying to find the wheels. Now with this new info, Poe and his friends get ready for their next adventure to stop Kloss and Veruca. Just a bit later, Dia shows up and gives them a ship as a gift. Turns out, she was only pretending to turn against Rukmini. She married Jaish to get back all the land he had taken over. 
Padma will marry Jayesh, get all his riches, and then Dia will take them back. To show she's serious, Padma hands over all the riches she got from Jayesh to Daya. Rukmini hugs Dia, happy that her friend didn't really change. But they have to say goodbye again because Rukmini and her buddies have to keep going on their quest to find the Storm Wheels. In a faraway place, Colin was still after Luther, even though he was running late. Then one day, he finally got a hint that led him to Luther, and he found out that Wyman, the royal guard, was following him. Wyman said his job was to find Poe, and he asked Colin to team up in their search for their targets. They agreed to start by checking out Ping's tavern. After a month of sailing, the Macedons helped Poe and his buddies finally got to the island they were looking for. They came across a farm run by a bunch of frogs who thought they were thieves. Luckily, Mastodon jumped in and stopped things from getting worse. The frogs realized Poe and his friends didn't mean any harm and welcomed them. While they were getting to know each other, a frog named Pelpel told them about a big issue the village had. Some monster was stealing their crops, leaving them with no food or money. So Poe and the gang decided to help. They said they'd set a trap to catch the thief. Even though the frogs said they could handle it alone, Poe and his friends stayed to help out. As it turns out, the thing stealing the crops was this giant scorpion-like robot. Even though it was dangerous, Poe, Mastodon, Rachmini, and Luther were all set to help the frogs. But when Mastodon tried using his spirit powers, it didn't work on the robot's strong metal body. Suddenly, Mastodon's spirit disappeared from Ping's body. That left Poe and his buddies with no choice but to run from the scary robot. Luckily, the frogs managed to finish making the trap right on time. But they still needed to get the robot into the trap. So they asked Poe and his pals to be the bait. They bravely said yes and led the robot toward the trap. Until they finally caught it. Pelpel got a shock when he realized the robot wasn't alive. It was controlled by someone. And they figured out that there were more of these robots. Suddenly, a bunch of them appeared and attacked. But things took a turn for the better when lightning bolts came out of nowhere and destroyed the attacking robots. They were all surprised to see that the storm wheel's power summoned the lightning. But they didn't know who was in control of it. The next day, Wyman and Colin showed up at Ping's tavern. They were searching for clues about Ferozen, the pirate queen who was after Ping. They looked all around and they found a painting of a goat that Wyman recognized as Ferozen. Ping, Poe, and the gang helped the frogs take the beaten up robots back to their village to study them more. They really wanted to find out who made these machines and controlled them. But there was something else on Lethera and Poe's minds. They were still wondering about the mystery person who controlled the storm wheels in the battle last night. Too bad the frogs didn't have any answers for them. All they knew was that this person was like a guardian. They always helped the villagers when they needed it. After some thinking, Poe and his buddies came up with a plan. They wanted to bring out this protector by using one of the robot scorpions. They rolled the robot up a hill and made it look like they were in trouble. Their plan worked because the protector showed up right on cue. Mastodon gives it a shot to catch the protector, but they're no match for how fast the protector is. The only one who can read the protector's moves is Poe. He even gets his hands on the storm wheels, but he can't get the weapon's power to work. The protector easily takes it back and decides to make a run for it. Poe and Luther a chase after the tricky protector, really wanting to catch the person who messed up their plan for the storm wheels. They follow the protector to an arena where a lot of animals are hanging out. That makes it even harder to find the protector. Luther starts to feel down because they're not getting anywhere. She starts to think she's just always going to fail. But Pio, being the positive one, tells her that failing isn't the end. It's just a step on the way to success. He tells her to keep going and not give up until they reach their goal. While all that was going on, Ping and Rachmini were on a journey together. Ping started telling her about his past. He used to be a pirate and even knew the pirate queen, Forozen. But then he got tired of all the fighting. So he pretended he died and started a new life by opening a shop on land. And Poe didn't know about his pirate days. Ping asked Rachmini to keep it a secret from Poe. But Poe and Lathera had their own mission. They needed to find the creature controlling the storm wheels. So they invited Ping and Rechmini to watch a Poktopok match at the arena. They thought maybe the one they were looking for would be in the audience. But when Poe saw Zuma, the tiger leader of the village, he thought Zuma might be like the protector frog they were searching for. They tried to talk to Zuma about the storm wheels, but his bodyguards stopped them. By chance, the three trailing brothers had just won a Poktopok match when Poe, Ping, and Rukmini showed up. Poktopok is a game where you try to get the ball into a ring to get points and the winners get to meet Zuma. When Poe found out they could still sign up, he quickly put his team together with Ping and Rukmini. But Luthera didn't want to join because she didn't like sports. Those three brothers were really good at Pak to Pak. They easily beat Poe's team. Seeing they needed help, Luthera agreed to join if Poe promised to watch over her. She was worried she might get all wild during the game. 
With Luthera's awesome skills, Poe's team started catching up to the three brothers in points. But as the game went on, Luthera started acting not so great. She played rough and just for herself trying to get points. Lucky for them, as the game was ending, Luthera realized what she was doing and went back to being her usual self. And Rukmini managed to score by getting the ball in the ring, so Poe's team won. Around the same time, Colin and Wyman hit up a tavern to find Ferozen. They didn't have to wait too long before someone mysteriously led them to her. Colin asked Ferozen for help to find Ping and she was up for it because she was also looking for him. They decided to team up to locate Ping and grab him. Veruka and Klaus sailed to an island using the wind helmet. They were all excited when they saw the lightning from the storm wheels in the distance. As they got closer to where they were going, they were filled with anticipation and excitement. While all that was happening, Poe and his friends got a chance to meet with Zuma after winning the tournament. But instead of talking about the storm wheels, Zuma surprised them by inviting them to sing and dance with her. It was a fun break, but Luthera reminded Zuma that they needed to talk about the weapon. Zuma finally showed Poe and his gang the storm wheel, but she was clear that she couldn't just hand it over. She told them the weapon was super important for keeping her village safe and making it thrive. Poe and his buddies understood how big a deal the storm wheel was and respected what Zuma said. They knew they had to figure out another way to get it. Then Zuma spilled the beans about how she and her villagers found the two storm wheels while digging a water channel. Finding those powerful weapons made the village really happy. They could control the rain and everything was great. But then things went downhill when a scientist showed up and got jealous of the storm wheel's power. The scientist was so envious that they made a robot scorpion to steal one of the storm wheels. Zuma didn't know what the scientist wanted to do with the stolen storm wheel. But she guessed the scientist might use it for their science stuff at a volcano. Since Zuma was still not giving them the storm wheel, Poe and his buddies had to go to the scientist's lab. So they decided to snatch it from the lab in a volcano. When they got there, they found out the volcano was full of robot scorpions. But their plan went wrong because Mastodon accidentally let the robots know they were there. They had a big fight with the robots and actually managed to beat them. After that, they tied up Ping, who was being possessed, to a tree so he wouldn't mess up their plan. Just when they were getting ready to go into the lab, Klaus and Veruka's ships came attacking. Those ships shot a cannon at them. In the middle of all that fighting, Mastodon got free from the ropes and took Rukmini's fiery whip to fight Veruka. Because of Mastodon's bravery, they could protect themselves and keep going with their mission. Even with all the tough stuff happening, Poe and his buddies finally made it to the scientist's lab right inside the volcano. And the scientist was a nice bird named Akna. She was really friendly and offered to help them out. As they wandered around the lab, Akna saw Luthera's stuffed bunny and mentioned that she had crafted it as a special keepsake for Luthera's brother. This heartfelt moment got cut short when the volcano started rumbling, ready to burst forth. With no time to lose, they hopped onto Akna's scorpion robot and dashed to safety. They reached Akma's place with Klaus and Veruka's ships hot on their trail. But thanks to Akma's aid, they managed to repel their attackers and escape from danger. Meanwhile, Klaus and Veruka didn't stop searching for Poe and his pals at the volcano's peak. Veruka simmered with anger, upset about their failed try to snatch Rukmini's whip. Finally, Poe and his buddies got to Akna's village and were amazed to find the three trumpet brothers already there. The village looked empty and abandoned, with no food or water sources. Akna told them that the village used to be full of life and prosperous, with plentiful crops. But then the rain stopped coming, leaving the land parched and lifeless. Akna spent her time making dolls for the village kids while the villagers tried to figure out why the rain had ceased. They eventually discovered that Zuma was the cause, manipulating the rain to fall only in her own village, leaving Akna's village in a drought. Once upon a time, a glimmer of hope shone for the villagers when Luthera's big brother, Alfie, arrived in the village. Alfie stepped up to lend a hand in snatching the storm wheel from Zuma and stopping her selfish ways. With Alfie's aid, Poe and his pals finally confronted Zuma and managed to grab one of the storm wheels from her. This made Zuma less powerful and let the villagers thrive again. But when they got back to the village, Alfie and Akna found out the storm wheel was super tough, almost impossible to break. Since Alfie had to rush back to England, he chose to take the storm wheel along and promised to come back when they found the solution. As a token of their time together, Akna gave him her cherished bunny doll. Then Luthera told everyone that two ferrets had attacked them the day before and Alfie didn't make it. This tragic loss fueled Luthera's need for revenge, and she was set on taking down Klaus and Veruka and smashing the storm wheel for good. They all huddled up to make a plan, deciding to get help from the frog tribe and multiply their scorpion robots to up their chances of winning. As Poe and his buddies get close to the frog village, they spy Veruka and Klaus' ship far off in the distance. Quick thinking, they sneak into a house to stay hidden. But then, Veruka and Klaus catch Pelpel. They bug him about where Poe and the gang are hiding. 
Despite all the pressure, Pelpel stands strong and doesn't give away his pals. This makes Verbica mad and she tosses Pelpel to the ship's corner, trying to knock him out of the sky. But suddenly, out of the blue, Zuma shows up with her storm wheel, just in time to save Pelpel from falling. Zuma takes on Verbica and Claus all by herself and a wild fight kicks off. At first, Zuma struggles against Veruca and Klaus since Veruca has two powerful tools. Yet Zuma pulls off a move and gets both those tools from Veruca by freezing time. Using special gloves, Zuma smacks the ship, sending it flying until it crashes into a mountain. Pelpel slips off the ship but Poe grabs him in time. Everyone's safe but now Zuma's got three weapons, which makes Luthera uneasy. Luthera is burning for revenge against Veruca and Klaus. So she goes up the mountain alone to see if they're still alive. The next day, while Zuma was practicing using her new weapons, Poe and the gang were busy making their scorpion robots even better. Out of the blue, Mastodon once again takes control of Ping's body and talks to them. Mastodon offers to help, however, they can to snatch the three weapons from Zuma's hands. Meanwhile, Luther had reached the volcano and found Veruca still alive, even though she was hurt. Kloss was off somewhere, looking for a healing plant for Veruca. Luther saw her chance and aimed her sword at Veruca, ready to attack. But just as she was about to strike, Klaus showed up and tossed her sword away, stopping Luthera in her tracks. So Luthera had to run away and hide. While Veruca and Klaus were hunting for Luthera, Veruca teased her by bringing up Alfie's death and how Luthera was to blame. This got Luthera super mad and she instinctively grabbed her sword and went after the two siblings. During a really intense part of the battle, Luthera managed to capture Klaus, putting Veruca in a tight spot. Luthera threatened to off Klaus unless Veruca gave up. But, surprisingly, Veruca decided to ditch Klaus and make a run for it. She didn't care what happened to Klaus as long as she saved herself. Even though she had the advantage, Luthera chose not to harm Klaus out of kindness. She just wanted him to realize Veruca's true colors before letting him go. After that, Luthera headed back to the frog village to meet up with Poe and the gang. While Luthera was duking it out with Veruca, Mastodon was training Poe in his lightning power. Poe was keen on mastering it too. At first, Macedon said no, claiming it would take forever to learn. But that didn't stop Poe. It only made him more determined. He even challenged Macedon to a practice fight. In the middle of the battle, Macedon kept thinking Poe wasn't up to the task and kept teasing him. This really got to Poe and got so mad that he unleashed his kung fu power and kicked Macedon. That made Macedon's spirit leave Ping's body. Once Ping woke up, they met with Pelpel and Acne. These two had finished getting a whole bunch of scorpion robots ready for action. Their plan was to attack Zuma when the sun came up. While they were checking out the robots, Luthera showed up and shared her story about what happened with Veruca and Klaus. Poe was happy to hear that Luthera had decided not to get back at the enemies by hurting them. But then, out of nowhere, Mastodon took over Poe's body. Poe found himself in his mind, where he met up with Mastodon. Mastodon explained he wanted to use Poe's body to defeat Zuma. So until Mastodon could take down Zuma, he asked Poe to hang out in a blank space. But Poe could still see what was going on outside by using the magic water in the bowl. As the sun came up, Mastodon, Luthera, and their squad of robotic scorpions launched an attack on Zuma's village. They asked Zuma to hand over the three magic weapons, but she said no and chose to fight instead. Even though she knew her fighters wouldn't match up to the scorpion robots, Zuma still went for it. Mastodon and his robots easily defeated Zuma's crew, making her put on the three magical weapons. The shoveldown between Mastodon and Zuma got really wild, making the villagers scared and see Zuma as a monster. Zuma got upset by this and got really mad. She made a huge pyramid rise up, aiming to wreck the village and everyone in it. Seeing that he couldn't take down Zuma, Mastodon went back into Poe's mind, letting Poe regain control of his body. With Luthera and Acne's help, Poe decided to tackle Zuma and try to stop her from wrecking the village. Even though Poe was giving it his all, Zuma turned out to be too tough. She unleashed a super powerful attack that knocked Poe out cold and sent him back into his mind where he met up with Mastodon again. But they didn't stay safe in that blank space for too long because a black hole showed up looking like it could suck them both in. The black hole was made by storm wheels and was supposed to trap their spirits, but Mastodon made a big choice. He sacrificed himself so Poe could keep going and save the world. Meanwhile, outside that blank space, Luthera was furious about Zuma's brutal hit on Poe. She launched a mega attack on Zuma, powerful enough to make the storm wheel fall from Zuma's grip. This was the perfect moment for Poe, who was awake again, to strike. He used his big belly and kicked off the wind helmet Zuma was wearing. That made the pyramid crumble down. At this really important time, Poe and Luthera team up to yank the storm wheel off the wall. And when they manage to get it, Poe uses the four powerful Tainxing weapons to halt the pyramid from smashing the village. 
Once Zuma is caught, Poe and the gang decide to head over to England to get rid of those dangerous weapons. Pelpel steps in to take Zuma's place, and Ahmed chooses to go along with Poe's crew on their trip. While Poe and his group keep going toward England, Colin, Wyman, and Fordozen are still sailing across the ocean looking for Ping. While they're on their journey, Poe and his buddies realize that it's Chinese New Year's Day, but they don't have any stuff to celebrate on their boat, so they come up with a different plan and decide to celebrate by listening to a story told by Poe. Poe starts his story with a tale about a guy who hunts monsters all over. One day, this guy shows up in a small town, but the folks there aren't too friendly and don't want to help him out. Feeling super hungry and worn out, the monster hunter goes to a tavern to grab a bite. The owner of the tavern gives him food, but tells him to chow down fast and leave quick. Right when he's eating, a crazy loud noise comes from outside, making the tavern owner hide in fear. The monster hunter gets curious and goes out to see what's up. And he finds a dragon setting buildings on fire in the town. As Poe watches all freaked out, a local hunter steps up to face the dragon, who's called Nyan. But the hunter gets beat real fast, so Poe jumps in to try and help. Even though he gives it his all, Poe ends up losing to Nyan too. Luckily, the sun comes up and Nyan runs off. But the dragon says it's coming back the next day to finish what it started. The hunter, still mad and pointing the finger at Poe for letting the monster get away, comes up to talk to him. The next morning, the folks who ran into the forest when Nyan attacked come back to the town. But they find the place all messed up after Nyan's rampage. One of them tells Poe why Nyan went after the small town. Every year, Nyan scares the townspeople for 14 nights in a row until the first full moon shows up, and then Nyan goes to sleep. With this new info, Poe figures he's gonna help the hunter take on Nyan. But the hunter acts all big, and says no to Poe's offer. While they're talking, Nyan pops up again out of nowhere, using fire to attack them. They have to run away from the flames. Poe and the hunter realize they can't take on Nyan head-on. That would just make things worse for the town. They decide to get Nyan to a clear spot so the houses don't get messed up. But, oh no, Nyan manages to corner Poe in a dead-end alley. Just when things seem hopeless, Poe accidentally sets off some firecrackers. These really spook Nyan and it takes off running. When the sun came up, the townsfolk were heartbroken to find their once peaceful town wrecked. They were super mad and pointed fingers at the hunters, blaming them for not keeping the dragon Nyan away. The hunters got told to get out of town right away. As they were leaving, the hunter who'd said no to Poe's help earlier spilled the beans to him. He told Poe why he ended up being a town protector. It turned out his brother died while protecting him from Nian. The hunter tried his best to fill his brother's shoes but couldn't keep the town safe. Then he left Poe feeling heavy-hearted. After he was left alone, Poe kept walking through the forest and found some townspeople who got kicked out of their homes. Chatting with them, Poe remembered that Nyan was afraid of firecrackers and the color red. With this new trick up his sleeve, Poe hurried back to town and told everyone to team up and protect their homes. He was sure they could beat the monster if they planned well. With the townsfolk, Poe started making plans and gathering stuff they needed to take down Nyan. When nighttime came, they were totally ready and at their spots, all set to face the big, scary dragon. It turned out that Nyan was really scared of firecrackers and the color red, just like Poe figured. The townspeople told Poe to go to the town square, where they planned to use a huge firecracker to spook Nyan off. But things didn't go as planned. The firecrackers didn't light up and things got really chaotic. Furious Nyan started chasing the freaked out townsfolk. Thankfully, Poe had another idea. He and a hunter put on this new outfit that scared Nyan, making it easy for Poe to take him down. But their win didn't last long. The hunter accidentally stepped on the costume's bottom, which tossed Poe out, and he ended up right in front of Nyan. Luckily, the firecracker that didn't light up before suddenly started sizzling, and Poe chucked it at Nyan. The monster took off as the firecracker exploded. The townspeople cheered and felt super happy watching Nyan run away. They thanked Poe and the hunter for saving their town. To celebrate, they sent up lanterns filled with their hopes and dreams into the night sky. In the end, Poe and his buddies followed the story's tradition and let a lantern go to celebrate the Lunar New Year. They also made a wish for good luck in the coming year. The story teaches us that when we work together and can change our plans when things get tough, we can deal with problems better.